are now going to watch a video on volume of a prism. The volume of a prism can be calculated by taking the area of your base. So B represents the area of your base. And H represents the height of your prism. Now, if you remember back to when we talked about surface area, your base is always the name before prism. So, for example, if I said a rectangular prism, the name in front, of, in front of prism is rectangle. So that means your base is going to be a rectangle. If I tell you that you have a hexagonal prism, the name in front of prism is a hexagon. So that means that your base is going to be the hexagon. So the area formulas for the base are always going to change. So let's talk about a rectangular prism first of all. You have the length, you have the width, and you have the height of the prism. To find the volume of a rectangular prism, again, it's just base times height. So the area of your base is found by doing length times width, and then your height is h. So then, in this case, your L times w is the area of your base, and then we're multiplying that by your height. So let's try an example. Before you do that, you need to be on page 90. Let the heading be volume of prisms. So this needs to go into your ISN. Also, that formula needs to go um, on your blue sheet. For a rectangular prism, in your second column, you are going to draw a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is length times width or base times height. You probably don't want to use base times height just because you're using height of prism as well. So I would just do length times width. All right, so you have an aquarium that is in a shape of a rectangular prism. So if I quickly draw a rectangular prism, we have a length of 120 feet. We have a width of 60 feet. And the rectangular prism is 8 feet tall. So to find the volume, all we have to do is take the length times width, so let's call this bottom part the 120 by 60 our base. We do the area of that base is 120 times 60. And then the height of the prism, so it's standing 8 feet tall, is going to go in for the height in our volume formula. When we calculate this, the volume is going to be 57,600 feet squared, feet cubed. Next one, a rectangular prism, prism has a following direct dimensions. So your length is x minus 1, your width is x plus 2, and the height of the prism is just going to be called x. So again, to find the volume, we take the area of the base and we multiply it by the height. So the area of the base, look at the bottom, we're going to have x minus 1 times x plus 2. Now, when you do this, you have to FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. You're going to get x squared. You're going to get plus 2x minus 1x minus 2. Now, this can be simplified to x squared plus 1x minus 2. Now, that's just the area of your base. Now, to find the volume, we have to throw in the height. So, we also need to take this value and multiply it by x. So, distribute your x all the way in. Your volume is going to come out to be x cubed plus x squared minus 2x units cubed. In this case, since they didn't give you any numbers for your dimensions, they just give you algebraic expressions, your answer will be in an algebraic expression as well. The next type of rectangle or, or prism that you're going to solve is a triangular prism. Now, the base is going to be a triangle. Again, the volume is base times height, B representing the area of your base. Now, how do you find the area of a triangle? Well, that's one half base times height, and then we're going to multiply that by height as well. Again, some of these formulas are going to get kind of crazy because um, they're going to have multiple letters that are the same. Um, in that case, I would not write the one-half BH times H on your 
formula sheet. I would just keep it area of the base times height. There's going to be two types of um, problems that you'll see. This is just um, a regular triangle. It does not have to, it's actually a scalene triangle. It does not have to be a right triangle. You sometimes will see a right triangle, and the right triangle may be one that you would see on a test. In your second column, your base is going to be a triangle, and to find the area of that, one half base times height. So go ahead and get that filled out. When you have that filled out, again, we're going to continue on page 90. So here is our first problem. We have a triangular prism. As you notice, that this triangle right here is going to be our base. If we have a base of 17, let's pull one of those little half triangles out, that height is going to be called a perpendicular bisector. So then that means this little part right here, or that little length, is going to be 8.5 centimeters. We also know that that angle is creating a 21 degrees. Now, in order to find the area of a base, we need to find the height. In order to find the height, we have to find um, that using trig. So for to 21, we have the adjacent side, and we have the opposite side. If you have A and O, you have to use tan. So tan of 21 equals opposite over adjacent. Actually, let's call that H just to keep things consistent. Cross multiply. 8.5 is equal to tan 21 times h. Divide by tan 21. Your height is going to come out to be somewhere around 22.14 centimeters. So now that we have our height, we can take a minute and find the area of our base. So the first thing now we need to do is find the area of our base. Well, the area of a base has to be a triangle, so we're going to use the one-half base times height. Our whole base of that triangle was 17, and we just found that height to be 22.14. So let's go ahead and calculate that. The area of your base should come out to be 188.19 or 188.2. Now, if you remember back to the volume formula, the volume formula is saying take the area of the base and multiply by the height of the prism. Well, we just found the area of the base to be 188.19. And if we look back at our diagram, they are telling you that if you flip that triang triangular prism on its triangle, or on the base, it is going to stand 12 centimeters tall. So that is going to be the height of the prism, and that's what I'm going to multiply the area of the base by you are going to get a volume of 2,258.28 centimeters cubed. The other type of right triangular prism is what you'll see. In this case, all we need to do is look at the triangle as your base. The triangle that is your base is you have a height of 16, and a base of 12. So this area is pretty easy to calculate. 1 half times 12 times 16. And when you do that, the area of your base is going to come out to be 96. Now if we want to find the volume, we need to know the area of the base times the height of the prism. Now again, if you rotate that triangular prism to the triangle as its base, so put that triangle on the floor, how tall is it going to sit? Or how tall is it going to stand? The area of the base was 96, the height of the prism is going to be 10 centimeters tall. So in this case, the volume is going to be 960 centimeters cubed. Again, this is the type of problem that you will probably see but when we do the work time in, um, in class on the packet, you will see the one that was previous to this problem. We're now going to switch gears and we're going to talk about a regular polygonal prism. That means that it can be a pentagon, a hexagon, octagon, anything higher than an octagon. 
um, again, the area or the volume is found by taking the area of the base times the height of the prism. Now, in this case, we can rewrite this because to find the area of the base, to find the area of any regular polygon, we're going to take one half times the perimeter times your apothem, and then we're going to multiply by the height of the prism. So on your second column, we're not going to put a shape because any of these three shapes can be seen. But the area formula for that is going to stay the same, it's the one-half perimeter times apothem. So I would put that down on your sheet as well, so you have reference to that in a little bit. Again, make sure that you have this formula added to your blue sheet, and we're going to continue on page 90. If you do not have any more room, then go ahead and go to page 91. So this example, I want to find the volume of a regular pentagonal prism. So if you remember, when we did all of the area of the regular polygons, the first thing that we had to do is find the central angle. To find the central angle, you're going to take 360 divided by the number of sides. When we divide 360 by 5, you are going to get 72 degrees. Now, this whole angle is 72 degrees, but we don't want that whole angle. We just want that little triangle. So half of that 72 degrees is going to be 36. Now we also know that the whole side length of the pentagon is 5, so if we cut it in half, this bottom portion is going to be 22 and a half. The only other thing that we need to know is the height or the apothem. Let's go ahead and calculate this. If we have 36 degrees, we have the adjacent side and we have the opposite side. So to calculate this, we have to use tan of 36 equals opposite over adjacent. When you calculate the height of the apothem, you are going to get somewhere around 3.44. So save that for later, because we're going to need that in just a minute. The next thing that you're going to do is you need to find the area of your base. So the area of our pentagon. To do that, you take one half times the perimeter. Well, if each one of our sides is five meters long and we have five sides, our perimeter is going to be 25. And then we want to uh, multiply that by the apothem. Well, we just found the apothem. That was 3.44. When we calculate this area, you are going to get somewhere on or close to 43. We're not quite done because we want to find volume. Volume is found by taking the area of the base times the height of the prism. Well, we just found the area of the base to be 43. If we scroll back up and look at this original problem, they said let the prism height be 7 meters. Now what you see in the diagram is just the base. I did not give you the actual 3D figure. If you were to draw this 3D figure, so the height of the prism is going to be 7 meters. So then we're going to take that area of the base, we're going to multiply that by 7. When you do that, you are going to get a volume of 301 meters cubed. Now sometimes you are going to see um, the volume or find the volume of a regular hexagonal prism. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to do 360 divided by n, which is the number of sides, and to find that central angle then you'd cut it in half. That central angle will become 30 degrees. Again you can pull that triangle out And all you're going to need to know is your apothem. The volume formula is still going to stay the same. The area of the base times the height of the prism. For example, 7. Sometimes you're going to need to find the area of a regular octagon. Again, it's the same thing. For tomorrow, you need to have these three questions completed. I will ask you to fill in the answers for one of these three.